This is the second video in Bayes' Rule and Bayesian Updating by Chandra Srapada. This video is about updating probability distributions using an intuitive example. Okay, so Dr. Evil has kidnapped you, and based on the role of a single die, he injects you with either the common cold, that's if he rolls a 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, or the bubonic plague. That's if he rolls a 1. So this is a little bit like Russian roulette. 24 hours later, you will develop symptoms. Could be a runny nose, or chicken egg-sized lymph nodes, or fatigue, which will serve as data regarding which condition you have. So here is the setup. This is your prior probabilities in cold, which is C, or plague, which is P. Why is it 0.83 versus 0.17? That's because five out of the six rolls gets you a cold, one out of the six rolls gets you the plague. You're gonna see some data, and um, based on that data, you're gonna update your probability distribution. You're gonna need some extra information. And, you know, as it turns out, you have this sheet of paper in your pocket. Why exactly are you carrying it around? Well, you've been carrying it around for years, and finally it's coming in handy. So what this sheet says is it gives you, on the condition you have the common cold, what is the probability you'll have these symptoms? On the condition you have the bubonic plague, what is the probability that you have these symptoms? Another way of putting it is it's a table of conditional probabilities. If that term is unfamiliar, then go back to video one. We write these conditional probabilities, probability of the data, given the hypothesis. So look at this entry. That's the probability of a runny nose. That's potentially one of the data you might see, given that you have the cold. Look at that entry. It's the probability of chicken egg sized lymph nodes, given that you've got the plague. This kind of information is absolutely essential for Bayesian updating. So we give these conditional probabilities a name, likelihoods. They tell you how likely you are to see certain data given that a certain hypothesis is true. To see the value of these likelihoods in Bayesian updating, let's go further into the example. Let's say that you saw, 24 hours later, fatigue. You wouldn't change your posterior probabilities. I'm sorry, you wouldn't update your prior probabilities in a way that changes your post so that your posteriors are any different. Why? Because the probability of seeing fatigue on the condition you have the cold or that you have the plague are identical. There's no basis to change your prior assignments. Let's say that you saw a runny nose. I think we should all agree that since a runny nose is far more common on the condition you have the cold, then the condition that you have the plague, you ought to update your probabilities by raising your probability assignment in that you have a cold and lowering the probability assignment that you have the plague. I want to be careful here. You don't simply replace your prior probabilities with these likelihood numbers. That's wrong. Notice that already your prior probability is 0.83 that you have the cold. If you were to simply replace that number with 0.8, you would be lowering the probability that you have a cold. But that's clearly false because you're seeing some data that's far more likely when you have the cold than when you have the plague. So what you want to do is update your probabilities in the direction of increasing your priors because you've seen some data that is more likely on the condition you have the cold than you have the plague. Look at chicken egg sized lymph nodes. Here, it's far more likely that you're going to see these large lymph nodes when you have the plague relative to when you have the cold. So in that case, you should lower the probability that you have a cold and increase the probability that you have a plague. That's how you do your updating. Hopefully this Dr. Evil example seemed <clears throat> pretty intuitive to you. If so, then let's try to step back and summarize intuitively what we've been doing. What we've been doing is that for each hypothesis, we've been updating our probability assignments for that hypothesis, upwards or downwards, based on the relative likelihood of seeing the data under that hypothesis 
versus the alternatives. It's a mouthful, but it's exactly what we've been doing. When we saw that a runny nose was <clears throat> relatively much more likely under the hypothesis of cold versus plague, we boosted our probability assignments to cold. When we saw the chicken egg lymph node was much more likely under plague than cold, we boosted our probability assignments on plague. With fatigue, when we saw that there wasn't a relative advantage for fatigue to be seen on either hypothesis, we left our um, prior probabilities unchanged. So this is intuitively what we've been doing so far when we've been updating our probabilities. Bayes' rule is an attempt to capture just this intuitive idea now set out in a little bit more detail and a little bit more formally. What Bayes says is, um, again, Latin H contains your set of hypotheses. D is the data you observe. The probability assignments to the hypotheses in Latin H after seeing the data are proportional to, that's what this symbol means, the prior probability distribution over the hypotheses in H times the likelihoods for seeing the data with respect to each hypothesis in H. Let me put it like this, which is a little bit more detailed. In order to get the prob, remember, this is a probability distribution over all the hypotheses. In order to get the probability for hypothesis one after seeing the data, um, that probability is proportional to the prior in hypothesis one times the likelihood of seeing the data under hypothesis one. The posterior probability in hypothesis two after seeing the data is proportional to the probability of the prior probability of hypothesis two times the likelihood of seeing the data under hypothesis two, and so on for all the hypotheses. That's how you get your posterior probability distribution. Now, thus far, I've been operating with this. I'm saying what that distribution is proportional to. But if I want to get the actual values, what this posterior distribution is equal to, I need to divide through by a normalizing factor. And that's going to be discussed in just a bit later. OK, so that concludes video two on updating probability distributions. Uh, well, in the next uh, video, we'll apply Bayes' rule to some concrete cases.